Their talk is about China, 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 China. But China is not an enemy of Africa. We have never been colonized by China. China was our protector. If one of your opponents who has a history of overthrowing your governments, who has a history of exploiting your natural resources unfairly, if that person suddenly put established military capacity in the middle of your country, how would you feel? We see it as the beginnings, in fact, the very advanced beginnings of an effort to recolonize Africa. We think that the West recognizes that Africa is increasingly moving out of their control, and they're trying to reverse that. They recognize that now, for example, there's China in terms of trading relations, in terms of financing, in terms of infrastructure support. Africa has alternatives, and I think they're worried about that. So we see the military intensification of militarization in two ways. One, fundamentally suppress our own people. The, the, the bases are directed at us to prevent insurrection, prevent rebellion, prevent the overthrow of unpopular leaders. But they are also planned and actually articulated as an effort to exclude strategic competitors. Well, the Americans have not hidden the reasons for those bases. They have made it very clear is to protect American interests in Africa. What are the American interests in Africa? The American interest in Africa is not to protect the African people. That's not an American interest. One discernible American interest in Africa is minerals, to protect their access to strategic minerals. Today, DRC holds about 70% of the world's cobalt deposits. Zambia, which is a neighbor to DRC, also has got huge deposits. Niger holds 70% of the world's uranium deposits. DRC has uranium. Zambia has uranium. Namibia has uranium. These are strategic minerals. These are what the Americans are protecting. Protecting from who? From us, the Africans, the owners of these minerals? Certainly not. They are trying to protect, to monopolize these minerals, these strategic minerals. Protect, keep away primarily China. Their talk is about China, 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 China. But China is not an enemy of Africa. We have never been colonized by China. There is no single African country that was a, a colony of China. Even today, China has never colonized and is not intending to colonize an African country. China has never shown any imperial interest in Africa. China was there with us. In our liberation struggles, China supported us. When the West was colonizing us, China was helping to liberate us. China was there to defend our independence, economically and otherwise. For instance, my country, Zambia, it was blockaded. All our neighboring country were still under colonialism. We had no access to the ports from Mozambique, from South Africa, from Namibia, from Angola. But there was no proper road, there was no proper, there was no rail. We asked the Americans, the British, to help us put up a rail system to the port of Dar es Salaam. They refused. President Nyerere of Tanzania came on behalf of Zambia and Tanzania to ask the leadership of China under Chairman Mao, Joe and Line, for help to build a rail. China at that time did not have the capacity, but China said there's no way they have to do it. They mobilized both the human capital, the materials that were needed, the finances that were needed. It was a very difficult task. 
China did not have that type of rail infrastructure in its own country. But the Chinese people were ready to build that for us. And in the process, China lost 70 of its own citizens, of its own people, in the construction of that layer. The remains of those 70 Chinese people still lie in Zambia. We have 70 Chinese people buried in Zambia today. We have Chinese solidarity that will never be forgotten, that will last forever. At that time, China did not have a single mine in Africa. They did not have a single corporation operating in Africa. Not a single one. So it was selfless, noble assistance to fellow brothers and sisters. China has continued even now when it's doing well to cooperate with Africa. If you go to Africa today, you see a big hospital. 99.99% probability is that it has been built by China. If you see a big airport today that is new in Africa, it's a very high probability that it has been built by China. If you see a rail network that is new, know that it has been built by China. You see a big bridge that is new, it has been built by China. China is there for us. Yes, there are challenges here and there. And the Chinese authorities are dealing with those challenges. And in the first place, let's not forget that our own colonization was done with military with force, brutal force. It was maintained with brutal force. It is being continued today in a new way again with the militarization of the African continent. Whenever there is resistance to their mining interests, they have not hesitated to use the military. So part of the militarization that we are seeing of the African, on the African continent, one is to protect their minerals and to ensure that they enjoy the, the use, the exploitation of these minerals at the exclusion of China and the others who are progressive. And, you know, I, I think that the story of the Tanzania Zambian Railway is a very, very important one. I, I always get excited when I hear you, you, you talking about this because there's a way in which I think probably younger Chinese see that as just. China's investment, China's support to Africa in the way that they see China, Chinese companies active in Africa today, without the context that you provided, that at that point in time, many of those African countries, many African countries had a higher GDP per capita than China did, that it was a massive sacrifice on the part of China. It was solidarity. China didn't set up a military base as the condition for, for building the railway. China hasn't established any military bases around Africa. So I think that younger Chinese people may not yet have contextualized the Tanzania-Zambia railway properly. So this was not, you know, the current China, which is the largest economy in the world, building a railway. This was China in, in the, it was the 70s or early 60s. It's an entirely different proposition, it's an entirely different context. I mean, the contrast you see, for example, the, the militarization, if you look in the Sahel region, in Niger, the largest drone air base in the world is in Niger. And you mentioned the, the uranium mine in Niger. Now that mine alone accounts for one third of France's electricity. It's one of the poorest places on earth. And they're sitting on one of the most valuable resources in the world. And next to it, you have this huge American drone base. So it is impossible for people in that area to rebel against the conditions. They're doing open pit uranium mining. The people in that area are poisoned for generations. There's a strategic resource there to protect it from Africans and also to exclude competitors like China and so on. 
So I, I really get excited when you tell that Tanzam story. It's uh, something people need to know. In life, it's always very important to be clear about things. And to be clear about things, sometimes it's better to understand the history. The history of things, the history of e events. They are militarizing Africa today when we are not asking them to come and help us militarily. When we wanted their military assistance, they denied us. In the late 70s, mid 70s to late 70s, when Zambia was being bombarded by the apartheid regimes in Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, and South Africa, we had no air defenses to protect ourselves and to protect the National Liberation Forces bases. We asked the Americans to sell us air defense systems. Not to grant us, but to sell us. They refused. The British also refused. Including the Soviet Union, refused. The only country that came to our aid at that time was China. China gave us MiG-21s and a few tanks. And that equipment is still there today. And China did not have much at that time, but they sacrificed an entire squadron of MiG-21s and gave us. And, and we, it's the same thing in Ghana. I mean, we went actually bombed and so on. But if you read the correspondence between the British colonial officers who then became foreign service officers, you read the correspondence, the person in Ghana, the person in Kenya, the person in the Home Office in London. Now, if such a person comes back and says he's building a military base, you cannot possibly think that it is in your interest. Definitely. It's not our bases. It's their bases. And they are honest about it. And to exclude strategic competitors. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because they are not protecting us from China. China was our protector. Yeah. It's not only on the, on the military front that they want to counter China. When China started the Belt and Road Initiative and infrastructure projects were started in Africa, roads, rail, and so on, they decided in their own ways to counter China's infrastructure programs by setting up their own. That's the Europeans and the Americans. They have come up with a, a program of $600 billion over a period of five years to build infrastructure in Africa to counter China's influence. So there is nothing noble about what they want to do in Africa. There is nothing about Africa that they want to do in Africa. It's purely in their own interests, selfish interests. But we know that projects like that, that are not based on noble and selfless sentiments, are worthless. Likewise, noble programs, noble projects that are not based or inspired by fair and correct ideas are also worthless. It's not the first time they are promising Africa this and the poor world. A few years ago, they had promised to take 3% of their GDPs to the development of poor, the poor world. How many of them have even contributed 5% of their GDP? Near to zero. None. So we'll be very happy if this 600 billion they have promised for African infrastructure and investment actually materializes. And they are saying it's going to come from private and public sources. That in itself is problematic. It's problematic. It cannot be guaranteed. How can they guarantee what private investment will be? How can they guarantee? On what terms are they going to bring it in? We know private investment come follows profit. So how is it going to match the Belt and Road Initiative projects. Again, everything for them is in their own interest, in their interest to counter China's influence in Africa. But what is China's influence in Africa? 
we have a relationship with China that will be very, very difficult to break. A friend in need is a friend indeed, they say.